Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to teach you how to play Caprice Number no. 5 by Niccolo Paganini. This probably, probably is the hardest piece I've ever learned, uh, hardest piece I've ever arranged and uh, had to learn. I'll show you how I was able to uh, play this and uh, things that I've done to get to the point to be able to play it. When I recorded it for my last album, uh, I started, I believe it's supposed to be 168 BPMs, um, as you can see uh, here on the tab, but I tried that and it was just way too sloppy, so then I moved it down to uh, about 158, still too sloppy. <laughs> Then I tried it at 148, still too sloppy. So I think if you were to listen to my recorded version uh, on classical music for the electric guitar, I'm actually playing it at 120. Uh, the intro, though, I play as fast as I can. Uh, same thing with the outro, but um, the 16th note just straight through is, is, is at 120. Um, so let me show you basically what's going on here and um, I'll follow you through with the uh, tab and talk, talk you through it. So the first thing we do is we hit this A note. I like to hit it and then vibrato it. Um, Uli Roth told me I should let the note ring and then vibrato it and then go up. Um, he saw me play this piece once uh, before and uh, explain that. So it's kind of a good thing to not just vibrato it, but hit it, vibrato it, and then come up. Now, we need to get an arpeggio that goes from A to that A. So um, use whatever fingerings you want. I've tried going that way. I've tried going through this uh, way. Um, I've tried, but then I realized I have a little time. So the, the fingering I'm using here is I'm hitting this A, and then I come up to here. And now after that, we need to descend uh, a har uh, harmonic minor. Well, first we hit this G note in A natural minor, and then we come down harmonic minor. So here's how I uh, articulate this intro. And um, we've got to work on that, be able to play your scale descending very fast. Another part that's kind of weird, I'll explain this, and I'll get to it, I'm just going to talk about this intro a little longer than the other parts, but um, is this this lick I practiced before, where maybe I'll go trying to get the shifting happening. So then, that was four notes. Then maybe I'll try five notes, but two notes with the first finger. And that can be a little tricky because you have to let your first finger come down and hit the right note. Um, it's kind of, I remember an exercise I used to play to help me with that would be, um, maybe I'll try to hit all the notes in A minor. I'll use my index finger. So my Maybe one more. Trying to get each each of the notes that are in key and not doing that chromatically. So that's something else to work on. That's pretty tricky, but we don't have to do that much of that. So let's go through that arpeggio again. A, vibrato, up to this A, descending harmonic minor. Next one, A, come up to here and slide up to the C note. Uh, and vibrato, you could see that in the tab. That's the second bar. So that was... Now we have to go all the way up that arpeggio and get up to this E note and then descend the harmonic minor. So that's kind of a weird move. We have to go from 17, I use my third finger I believe here, don't I? To get the string strong enough to bend. So it's slide and then bend on 22 to make it to 24, unless you have a 24 fret guitar. So. That's a tricky move that you might have to practice a couple times. And then finally, we need the super high A note 
Um, if you, uh, let's see, yeah, you can you can see it there, I believe, uh, in the tab still. Uh, I'll move the tab up when we, when we need to. But, um, so, this last arpeggio is 17, 20, bending 22 to make it sound like 24, and then we have to, the way I do it is I hold 17 on the high E and I use my index finger to touch where the harmonic would be and then I pick with the middle finger and thumb to get that note. One more time. So that note, sometimes on my, um, on my effects pedal, I do have um, a whammy pedal where if I hit a note, it goes up uh, whether an octave or two. Uh, I think I was had it at two. There's one. So a lot of times I could go like this. And then I go to here. And then I can walk down like that. Otherwise, I would usually just do that artificial harmonic that I was talking about. Sometimes with my guitar I would hit that high A note here. I had a, I think I had a Jackson where that would be an A note like, or if you have 29 frets you can just go to that note. But that's one of the trickier parts. <laughs> And then from there, I kind of just pretend I have the frets and walk out. Got me? So that's that, that's how I get to that super extended range to get to the 29th fret. That's what I did on the album, right? Um, so you have those couple ways to get that that whole part through. Um, let's see, going through this, the next part. Let's look at the tabs here if you want. The next part is uh, so we descended that after getting all the way to that high A note, and then we're here. Uh, let me move the tab up a little bit uh, for us. The next part is after that we descended all this down. This could be all hammer-ons, but it's just an achromatic scale. This could be all pull-offs, and then this A chord right there. Um, so we uh, uh, basically are just after this. Picking it or hammering on and pulling off. That was just an achromatic. Now, that's another thing you should practice. Um, and there, there it is. There's your intro. Okay, so that's one of the main hardest parts of the song that you want to try and uh, get through. Playing the arpeggio from here. Uh, a minor arpeggio from the A to this A, and then descend your minor scale. First natural minor with that one natural minor note, then the rest it's all, all harmonic minor, then up to the C, and harmonic minor down, and then up to the E, and then we have that, that slide thing is tough, and then finally here, when that harmonic, sometimes like this, it's tough to do, it really is. And then this chromatic scale. Now this is a cool uh, A minor chord fingering. After that note you hit the 7th fret of the A string, the 10th fret of the D string, and the 10th fret of the B string. That's an A minor chord. Sounds pretty cool, huh? So, that part I play pretty fast, probably um, up to speed that you'd hear the violinist play it. But this next part, it just always came out so sloppy. So um, I, I just don't think that 168 is actually doable. It really is insane. I'm sure some, some kids out there can probably handle it. But So uh, let's move the tab up a little bit. Let's look at it from the left side of the screen here. Um, oh, where am I at here? Um... So yeah, if we look at the tab starting here, oh, sorry, make sure you see it. Here we are. 
So if you're looking right there, got me? Uh, this is uh, basically the entire song. You can just follow the tab here, and it's just all alternate picking. Okay. Oh, and this song, by the way, it's available in my new book, um, Classical Music for the Electric Guitar. The tab book uh, and uh, transcription book I made for all the songs on the album. And you can hear the album. It should be out on, uh, depending on when this video comes out, should be out on uh, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, Amazon Music. Um, what else is there? Uh, well, I guess those are the main ones. You could probably find it here on YouTube. Uh, YouTube music. Uh, I might make a video of me just performing this with the tab scrolling by, but uh, here's all the tab for you, and uh, if you wanted it in, in, in book form, check out that book. You'll find that book on Amazon uh, as an ebook and Kindle, and um, you, you could probably find the tab book, and uh, if not, you could contact me and I can, I can mail you um, a copy of it as well. Um, but yeah, and you can listen to my version as well. Nonetheless, this whole part is alternate picking except for one of the parts, uh, or except for a couple parts where we have to do sweep. That kind of thing. Up or down might be sweeps. And there's this other part that's kind of tricky where you may have to go down, up, 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 or something along those lines. But in, 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 if you can do it, it's going to be alternate picking all the way through. So this part here, we're starting out. Like there, we go down, up, down, 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 up, like uh, like that kind of then alternate. So uh, that's, I guess that's your first four bars. Uh, then it, I guess it kind of repeats that same uh, same kind of thing, uh, an octave higher. Uh, let's take, if you want to look at the tab here, I'll line that next, uh, the next five bars up here from the left side of the tab. Let's see if we squeeze in another measure maybe. No, not quite. Um, so here we are. Now this part, same thing. Uh, now on that part, if you look at measure, uh, um, let's say from from measure 18, it goes like. Uh, so starting here on measure 19. Now, if you wanted, you can make that a little easier. Sometimes when my picking's out and I'm not practicing like I haven't been lately, I'm gonna have this high action right now. But I could do hammer ups. Hammer. So measure 17. Hammer from nine to ten. 7 to 10 could be a hammer, 5 to 8 could be a hammer, 3 to 7, you could do those as hammer ons. Uh, if you wanted, same sounds good too. But now here I believe I go down, up, 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 uh, like that, uh, down, I'm sorry, down, up, 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 up. So it's up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 or it's down, up, down, down. And then here, this part in measure 20. Uh, down, up. So that part's pretty tricky right there. Um, we have to be able to switch between alternate picking to a little bit of economy picking. Uh -oh. So you see how that kind of worked out there? Um, one more time, I'll put this here uh, from, let's say from here. So it's kind of a mixture of alternate picking there. Yeah, because if I try to alternate all that, I'll miss it. So it's down, up, up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up, and then let me uh, move the uh, tab here over for you to see that next uh, those next measures. So let's take uh, this next. Um, this next phrase here, 
move over a little bit and try and get you back here. Okay, so here's this next bar, uh, starting here on five. And then this is a down. I use all alternate picking here. Now I use sweeping. Now it's all sweeping down. I mean up. So um, I should maybe talk about these uh, this part here. Um, with this uh, uh, here, I'm using a chromatic scale as three note per string. So it's it's one E and a, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a four E and a. That's pretty tough to get the accent just right. This is something um, I learned this lick from a Danny Gatton video. Um, and I thought it was kind of senseless. Why would I ever learn that? In fact, um, Jesse, go ahead and roll the clip. Uh, check out, check out the clip of Danny Gatton doing this little section. Uh, roll the clip, Jess. Uh, some single note picking kind of things. Here is an exercise that is extremely good for up and down picking. It's very simple and it looks dumb, but it's hard to do. And it's almost a chromatic scale, but not quite. So you start with a downstroke. You get to A flat, that's a downstroke. When you get to A, it's an upstroke. It's a uh, almost a chromatic scale, but not quite. Just for the sake of it being an exercise, if it was to be chromatic when we got to the G string, we would have to jump to the B string because we'd get the B flat and then we'd have to go to B. But we want to keep all of our fingers doing, playing in groups of fours. Good for the little finger. Good for all of your appendages in the up and down strokes. So the E string, the big E, we will start with a down stroke. It ends with a downstroke. Now, because it ended with a downstroke, we go to the A string. It starts with an upstroke because everything has to be up and down consistently. So the A string portion of that ended on an upstroke. Therefore, the D is going to be a downstroke. Same as the E, and so on and so on. So chromatically, it just goes. to the A flat on the high E string. That was a down stroke, so you're gonna have to come back down with it and it'll be like this. You don't wanna play two A flats, just one. That's a good warm-up exercise for both hands. And if you really wanted to play that lick and play it fast, I wouldn't advise trying to do it that way. At least I can't. Not real fast. That's about as fast as I can do that comfortably. But there is a way to cheat. And that is to do the E string just the way I showed you. And then when you go to the A string, jump right across with a down stroke. So they all start with down strokes. Once again, slowly.
quick, it sounds like... Shit. Can't do it. Oh, pardon me. Painful, painful. Very difficult to do. Not my favorite thing to do. That's why I use it as an exercise and don't use it on the gig much. So, yeah, if you see that, you'll notice uh, I, I'm like, I'll never need that. But then here it kind of comes into play. Um, I may talk about this if I do another one of these videos for the uh, Flight of the Bumblebee. I'll, I'll, I'll show you that too. But it's five note per string chromatic scale, and that's really tricky to get it phrased just right with the timing. So it's one E and a two E. And, a... uh, and then once we get, uh, we, we go chromatic, but we won't hit the C sharp. So. Sometimes if my picking's not good, I usually do a little pull off right there to get me settled so I can get to a downstroke right here uh, to get into the, uh, the um, uh, where, where am I, this part. So uh, that can be pretty tricky. So that, you can see, that's just, it's a troubling, it's a very troubling uh, situation right there. But after that, it ends up repeating that whole phrase that we talked about. So um, it was... Uh, then you're back to that whole beginning part. So you'll then you'll run through that whole thing, but the next time through, when you do this, sorry, I gotta use a down up. See, if I go down on that C note and then an upstroke on that C note, it ends up allowing me to land on a downstroke for, for that part, which kind of locks it all in. So that's what's kind of weird, is down on that C and then up here and then do a five note per string chromatic scale. Now, the next, uh, this next part, if you look at the, uh, the, the second ending here, if you look at the second ending, uh, we're right here in measure 29, um, this just changed. Uh, so then here we go. This is the other part I think is very difficult. The rest of it's pretty self-explanatory. Just follow the tab and alternate picking everything. Just try and coordinate your hands. Uh, this part I was not able to do um, alternate picking. And this reminds me of an uh, old Al Miola video. I remember it was an REH uh, video, uh, instructional video, Al Miola. I got when in, in like the 80s or something uh, on VHS. And I remember there was one lick on there where he's going, um, uh, I believe it was down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. And I'm like, this is impossible. Nobody's ever going to do this. No one's ever going to need to do this lick. It's silly. Like that Danny Gatton thing from Danny Gatton's instructional. Um, Jesse, why don't you roll the clip? Uh, check out LD Miola doing this, uh, this, this little lesson. I'll, I'll take a minute and watch this. Concentrate more on the, on the wrist action. Alternate pickings, preferable. Unless you're playing phrases that uh, are somewhat like this. It's impossible to use an alternate picking style there because it would be awkward to go up, down, up. Now, if I played this real slow, up, down, and to think that you'll be able in this position to swing back up and hit the third string, which is your B flat in this particular triad, is impossible, especially at a fast tempo. So you want to be able to play uh, passages that require you to play uh, first string, second string, third string in succession, uh, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down. And that's a picking exercise in itself. It's a very difficult thing to do for guitar players. Okay, now if we were to do the same thing, say, same triad, going down, starting from the third string this time, which is still starting on the B flat of the third string, D sharp, 
G, or in this case, B flat, E flat, G, rather. You want to go down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. So there are times an alternate picking uh, uh, doesn't work as a down, up, down, up kind of motion. And as an example, and this example is, is a, a passage from a tune that I recorded on my first album. And um, it was a very, very difficult thing for me to get. So I, I used that as uh, a practice exercise for myself to develop this up, up, down motion. Now, in this particular one, I'm starting with a triad uh, coming up with F sharp, C sharp, G. If you could just try this real slow, this is an exercise. Up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down. Now, if you do this long enough, about this long, you'll notice your hand will probably tighten up right about here. idea is to play it really evenly. Okay, so as you see, that was pretty sick, but I worked on that a little bit, and now when I'm doing the arrangement, I found that that was actually something we should learn because there is no other way around this. I tried to do this part with tapping, and I just didn't have the range on the instrument, and there are all kinds of other ways of trying to do this, but here's that, that's what I came up with. So here, when we're going through, say, from measure 30, uh, after uh, the first 16th note, that could be all alternate picking, no big deal. But now we need to go down, up, up, up. Or so it's taking a taking a look from measure thirty. <laughs> so let me take that again, then I'll show you the rest of that. So it's like uh, say from measure uh, measure twenty nine. <laughs> So uh, I'm trying to go down and then up, up, up after alternate. Let me move the tab up a bit so you see where we're at here with that section. So that section to me was one of the most, uh, the most nastiest sections. Let me see if we could get over just a little bit more here. Um, actually, let me give you a little bit. You could where well, you could see this whole section. Okay, so from 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 that part right there, uh, we've got. Uh, sorry, it's a little sloppy. Let me try it. Down, down, up, down, up. And then after that, we're back to that five string chromatic scale that we talked about. So that whole part. Still, it's tough to make sure it's one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a not one. Real easy to kind of get that off. So that's something I, I had to practice quite a bit. Probably still need to practice it quite a bit to to make that work to be able to play this uh, song. Okay. So let's m moving on from uh, from measure thirty six. I believe we're on right there. Uh, and that's just, remember, down, up for that uh, C note here, and then the octave, this is an up stroke. Uh, because then that enables your pick to get through that properly. Now it's another chromatic scale after that C note. And I do a four note first string. Now we don't hit this A note, so it's chromatic. Skip that A note, and now we're at the another section 
that I feel is pretty difficult. So let's talk about this other section here, looking at it from uh, measure 40. So this is another down, up, 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 down, up, pull off, or uh, alternate kind of, so that could go, uh, see how I did that, or if you can handle it. So I would use a little bit of economy, a little bit of alternate or economy, and then I use a pull off, either. And then uh, this part, uh, that part's pretty tricky. So that whole part, one more time, really slowly. So I'm trying to read this and play it. I'm probably better when I just get it in my memory. But down, up, 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 down, alternate, down, up, 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 down, alternate, down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, alternate. Now it's all alternate. And then we're back into kind of the main theme that we did before. So that part was kind of nasty. So um, let me move on from there. Get you a, where you could see that maybe. So for measure 44, which I think is right there, uh, we have this. This is the same as the same feel as the main. Uh, Sorry. I alternate pick all that. Alternate still. Now this part is down, up, 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 down. Now here, this part I arranged so many different ways. This part used to really trouble me, but I think I have memorized here still, so. Yeah, so. And then. So that's another really trou uh, troubling area. So this is pretty easy, say from measure 45. No, I'm sorry, measure 44. Ah! So let's talk about that part right there. That's the part I, I would practice. Uh, remember recording this. Uh, when I recorded this, I recorded it three times. And then I just figured out the ones that I didn't make mistakes and I made a comp of, of between the three. But there are some parts where if you just can't play it, you can't play it. So this was the part I would um, practice before I even recorded it. It's just uh, measure 48 right here. Yeah, I was trying to remember. Yeah, and the reason I have so much trouble with that is because I had the notes arranged differently where I was going down, up, 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 and I arranged them to be on different strings, and I had a hard time remembering it. I think that's kind of why I had an issue here, because I still have an issue with that, but, uh, so. Just right there, and then, uh, this is a sweet pick, and this, that's a sweet pick. So. Between these parts that I, I talked about with the down, up, 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 and, and, and this part, those are the main issues that are, are difficult with the song. That right there, that's nasty. Let's see if I have it memorized. I don't know if I have it memorized. You should memorize it, not read it from the tab. But. And then we're kind of home free from there, to be honest. So, uh... yeah, I might have missed a note there, but you get the idea. And um, so, moving along from there, let's look at measure 51. Measure 51 is basically the same as the beginning. I'm um, sorry. And then this part's not too bad. I go down, up, down, up, and alternate all of that. Here I just told myself, it's kind of like there's a certain pattern to this that, that, that you find. It's pretty, so it makes it a lot easier to remember. Um, here it's uh, basically from uh, measure, say, 52. It's like a major, then, then it looks like a, kind of a, a minor third. Um, then you stretch out here, major third. 
uh, I think what I used to tell myself here is once I get down to here for the A note, I stay there and do like that kind of arpeggio version and then into a diminished as opposed to chromatically moving up and down. Then we're back. So let me see. Let's talk about that again. So you see how that kind of works out. It's, not, it's, it's actually a little easier than 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 you think. And then here, and that was just an E major. And then this is that D minor. And then you raise that up to get you into. Uh, well, let's move on. Let's move on from there. Uh, let me move this over so you could see all of that. Um, and now sometimes, depending on how you know what you're doing and what you're playing, you can arrange these notes in different ways. However, you feel like playing your arpeggios, take it. You know, take take it into your techniques that you're good at. And then this one's cool. It's a D minor. Raise that, and then you're into an E major. Two E majors like that. So it's like. So there you have it. And then that A note is your uh, beginning, uh, the beginning theme again. So uh, let me see if we could find where we're at here. Uh, so that's not too bad. You see that? So let's take it from this E. Oh, sorry. Got it. So then to uh, finish that up, we have... Um... This is pretty tricky to pick this part. You gotta get, keep your... All right, so now we're pretty much just about done. But uh, we watched that. So this is pretty interesting. This is uh, alternate picking. So this is a diminished arpeggio. What am I even doing there? Pull off, up, up, pull off, up, up. I guess that's kind of weird. And then your uh, a, a minor, simple A minor, uh, six string. And then your here is a cool E major. I guess, I guess that's an E7. You'll see that in other Paganini kind of stuff. And then your, uh, let me move this over for you. Uh, hopefully you're able to see these tabs. Hopefully I left them up long enough for you to use these tabs to, uh, uh, to do it. Or hopefully maybe we're missing one bar or something that you really need and you'll go buy my tab book. Uh, but then here we are, just another four note per string. Um, sorry, I think I didn't, you don't want to hit that to sixth fret. And then here we're doing these, uh, this little move here. So uh, if you look at it from measure 64, again, we're hitting a down stroke and then we're going to, that's kind of tricky down and then we're trying to do an up stroke for that, but it's probably best. So watch, down, up. So we land on a down stroke when we get to that A note that's in measure 60, uh, 67, I guess. No, wait, no, I'm sorry. In measure, uh, measure 65. So that, and then here's what we do here. That's kind of a cool move. I would practice that too. That's kind of a cool thing to, to work on. So uh, for measure 64, one more time. Uh, let me move this over so you, so you could look at the ending. The ending is the exact same as the beginning, uh, but instead of moving up in a minor arpeggio, we go up a major arpeggio, and we um, uh, and we end with a major chord. So the intro is basically the same, um, but we have to watch the fingering we're going to use for it. So take a look here. Here's the outro. I go now again. You can go. 
There's so many ways to get from A to A with an arpeggio. This is the way I go, because we don't need to go that fast. We go nice and slow, and then I do three notes on that E, and then I follow up out of this kind of an A shape here. There I use a four notes on a string, three notes, four notes, three, four notes, three, to play my major scale. And there I just, I play as fast as I humanly can there. You know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't look at these time signatures. They're just arranged so that the notes look good. For some reason in my software program, I had an issue with doing no time signatures and making all the notes look right. So uh, here it's the same thing as the, as the intro. It's just instead of going from A to A and down a major scale, then we go A to the C sharp that time, and then an A major up to the C sharp to the E, and now we go up to that harmonic thing we talked about earlier. Now we climb up to chromatic again. And now this time we end with an A major chord, which is going to be 7 on the A, 6 on the G, and 5 on the high E. That right there. Let me uh, move it forward on here so you could see the last bar. Um, Right there. So then here's the ending. Uh, let's say I were to take this from uh, measure 75 to the end of the piece. So I kind of did that there. So it's here. That's how I do that long arpeggio. And then I pretend it's 28. 26, 24, 22, and I'm just kind of descending. And I, you know, truthfully, I'm kind of faking. Pretending that there's actually frets here and that it's going to work. And once we get to that, um, to, uh, let's see, that, that, that ending, uh, a, a note there, uh, we're, we're basically, um, and so I was going, say we're doing that ending. Once we get back to this A note, we just walk chromatically up and back and end with the A chord. And again, for this. And that's it. So here's that last. Something like that. Okay, so that is how I play Caprice number no. five, note for note rendition of uh, of it all the way through. You don't necessarily have to sell your soul in the crossroads or to the devil in some place in Italy, maybe I guess or something. Um, but you do have to practice an awful lot of alternate picking, an awful lot of sweep picking, a lot of economy picking, and be able to have nice long range and uh, be pretty creative and try not to play it faster than you can handle. Um, if you listen to my recording of it at 140, there's just too many missing notes, so I moved it down to 120. I probably, if I practiced more, could have got it up to 130, 140, 150. You, if you search on YouTube, you could see me playing this a few years ago um, on the guitar that was stolen from me, and uh, and it's okay. Uh, if you listen to it on the new album, it's very, very good. Maybe I'll do a video where I just have the, have the music playing and I'll have the tabs scrolling, but this was a lesson to teach you how to play it. So hopefully that's okay. Hopefully... Um, Hopefully you learned how to play it, and uh, hopefully this tab worked out okay for you. So, uh, thank you very much, and uh, take care of yourself. Thank you. Goodbye.